Hi there. I want to provide a brief overview of the six components of reading, which are comprehension or a language, phonological awareness, phonics, fluency, and vocabularies. So those are the six. I also want to provide you with some context about how each of the six can look in both elementary and secondary classrooms. So after I review you know, the definition as well as some examples, I'm gonna provide you with a reflection question that I encourage you to think about because I want you to be able to deepen your connection as well as your understanding of the six components. All right, so let's jump in and get started with the first one, which is comprehension reading comprehension specifically. And reading comprehension is the ability to understand. It is the ability to interpret. It's the ability to derive meaning from what you've read, what your students have read. And it's not just about reading the words, like, you know, saying them out loud or thinking them. It's about understanding the context and being able to make inferences and grasp the underlying message or theme in what was read. So this can look in an elementary classroom. It could look like a teacher reading a short story aloud, and then the teacher asks the students to draw pictures of their favorite part of the story and explaining why they chose it. And this activity can help students, especially the younger students, to really articulate their understanding of the story in a hands-on creative way. Now, in a secondary classroom, students can read an article on their own. Uh, it could be a current event article. It could be uh, pay, you know, some pages from a, a novel or a book that they're reading or their textbook. And then they can engage in a class discussion or a class debate. Uh, they can understand others, other classmates' perspectives based on the text that they read. And it also encourages them to think critically, analyze the text, and interpret the information that they've read. They're making connections based on their understanding, their comprehension of what they have uh, you know, what they've just read. So you may find that teachers can use open-ended questions to guide students to develop a deeper understanding and interpretation of texts. All right, so that is reading comprehension. Now we're gonna jump, oh, well, here's your reflection question. I forgot about that. So in terms of reading comprehension, think about a time that you misunderstood written instructions or even a message, uh, something that you read or heard particularly read? Like, how did you realize that you had a misunderstanding? And what strategies did you use to clarify the meaning of it? Did you go back and reread? Did you break, break down the text into smaller parts to be able to understand, you know, what is the topic being discussed and what is said about the topic, right? So what strategies did you use to clarify the meaning? That's how you're going to be able to connect and understand that first element uh, of the first component of reading, which is comprehension. All right, so we're gonna talk now about oral reading accuracy. And this involves correctly pronouncing words while reading it out loud. Now, this is absolutely an essential piece, uh, you know, for, for fluency because it does help in reinforcing the understanding of the text. So oral, oral reading accuracy or fluency can be seen in an elementary classroom when students take turns reading. They could read a paragraph from a book, but they're taking turns reading out loud. And then the teacher may gently correct mispronunciations uh, and help them to reinforce the correct pronunciation you know, with the whole class if there's a particular word maybe that they're, they all are, are struggling with. And there's also apps and programs that can record students reading and 
help them to identify these words that they are, um, help to flag them and identify these words that are being mispronounced. Okay, next is the, in the secondary classroom, um, oral reading accuracy or fluency can be seen where students are practicing reading a passage in that new language and they are focusing on, you know, pronouncing the words accurately uh, to improve their fluency as well as their comprehension of the language. So teachers may use group reading, oral presentations, or dramatic readings to be able to hear and correct the pronunciation uh, to enhance the pronunciation of, of you know, of, of words. All right. So I would like for you to reflect on the role of tone as well as pronunciation in communication. How can mispronunciation change the meaning or impact of a message? Think about that. And then that's how you're able to make that connection with the or reading accuracy. How can mispronunciation change the meaning or impact of a message? All right, let's talk about phonological awareness next. So this one refers to the ability to recognize and manipulate sounds in spoken language. Think about things like when rhyming, you hear rhyming or alliteration or syllable counting, right? Elementary teachers may play like a rhyming game where students must think of words that rhyme with a given word. They may have students clap out the syllables to count the syllables in a word. Uh, you know, these activities are fun and they enhance the student's ability to recognize and manipulate sounds. In a secondary classroom, teachers, um, language arts teachers can use poetry to help students analyze the use of uh, alliteration, which is a literary device, as well as rhyme scheme. And it can, uh, that, that can help students understand how the, their phonological um, awareness is important in even the, the, the high school or middle school level. And it contributes to their overall effect uh, and meaning of the poem when they are paying attention to those kinds of um, phonological elements, alliteration and rhyme scheme and the flow, all of that makes a difference in the meaning of the poem or the piece, right? So what I would like for you to do is reflect on the use of songs, rhymes or wordplay in your personal life. How do these experiences help you in understanding Placing value, I would also say, and manipulate sounds, right? So think about that, especially especially with music. Okay, now we're going to talk about phonic elements, which involves recognizing the relationship between letters and sounds. And it's an essential skill for decoding words. So in elementary classrooms, using phonic games and letter sound matching like, you know, letter cards or having the students create simple words by matching the letters with their corresponding sounds are hands-on activities that can reinforce the student's understanding of phonics, right? And then in a secondary classroom, it could be in a reading, um, intensive reading or reading intervention class where students work on decoding the more complex words using their knowledge of phonics, right? Like the um, etymology of words or the roots, and that can help them to uh, break down, decode more complex, more challenging words so that they can better understand those challenging texts. So think about or consider a time when you had to decode an unfamiliar word. Perhaps it's a word in a different language or maybe it's a, a technical term um, uh, that you were not familiar with. And what strategies did you use to help understand the word better? What kind of decoding of the language did you engage in? Okay, now we're on to reading fluency, and this is the ability to read with speed, accuracy, and proper expression. 
It's crucial for understanding as it allows readers to focus on the meaning of the text rather than on decoding each word. So in an elementary classroom, uh, students participate in students will participate in a reader's theater. Um, they can read scripts aloud in groups, but they focus on reading with expression at a, an appropriate speed rather than understanding what the what the what the context is. So reading fluency is about speed, reading with speed. In a secondary classroom, students are given timed reading exercises like. Uh, you know, they're given a passage to read silently and then discuss in groups. Um, again, this is going to be focused on their reading pace. And the teacher is trying to identify how their reading pace may have helped or hindered their understanding of the text. Okay, so fluency, reading fluency relates to the speed, the accuracy, and the proper expression in the reading. So think about um, a book or an article that you've read. If you could have like, you know, read the physical book or maybe you listen to the audio book. And how did the pace of reading influence your understanding as well as your enjoyment of the book or article? Okay, now we're on to, I believe this is our last one, which is... Um, vocabulary uh, or word recognition, which is the ability to identify words quickly and effortlessly. So it is a foundational skill for fluency, be, uh, flu being fluent in reading for literacy, right? Uh, in an elementary classroom, uh, this could look like students playing sight word bingo or a teacher having word walls or using flashcards and playing games with flashcards where students must recognize and find, you know, those common sight words quickly. In a secondary classroom, this could also look like word walls because we have word walls in secondary classrooms as well. Uh, in a science class, particularly students might use flashcards with scientific terms, context clues and vocabulary lists, you know, to improve their quick recognition and understanding of key vocabulary words that are related to what, you know, the topic or the content in the secondary classroom. So for you, I would like for you to think about um, the process of learning to recognize a complex or technical term relevant to this new profession of education, because I'm sure there's like lots of terms that you've come across. One, one in particular that I know a lot of us gets, a, a lot of, a lot of us, um, stumbles on is the word pedagogy and even the word andragogy, right? And so recall the process of learning to recognize those technical terms or complex terms. Um, and it could be something related to education or related to a personal interest or not. But think about the process of learning to recognize an unfamiliar term and how did you become familiar with this word? What strategies did you use so that you would remember how to pronounce and how and and what even the the meaning of this word was? Okay, so we have reviewed all six of the um, components of reading. Uh, they are all interconnected, as you could see from um, the examples that I shared with you. And not only are they interconnected, but they are vital in developing your students' comprehensive literacy skills. So no matter what grade or subject that you plan to teach, understanding and fostering these reading skills in your classrooms will be essential for your students' academic success. So we've talked about comprehension and oral language and phonological awareness and phonics and fluency as well as the uh, vocabulary. All right, so go ahead and continue working on your activities and I will see you soon, bye.